Welcome everybody that's watching online. Can we say welcome to them this morning? Hey. All right. <clears throat> a lot of people watching online these days, and uh, maybe one day you'll be able to come and be with us in person. It's better in person, right? <laughs> I know. So, yeah. so anyway, when you can, we look forward to seeing you there. I'm going to preach a special message today. Since this is Mission Sunday, the title of my message is called Life on Mission. And I'm going to speak to you uh, with regards to how we are to live our lives on mission. Isn't it ironic that there are times when we have the most life-giving, authoritative, kingdom dominion message, and yet something prevents us from letting it out. Anybody ever experienced that? Liars. <laughs> Come on. I, all right, maybe, maybe you all are just bold witnesses every day. Okay? Good. <laughs> this is amazing. My preaching is having more effect than I thought. I need to preach to myself more then because I struggle with this personally. I have... Uh, there's always this, the enemy wants to silence you. The enemy would love to keep you silent. And uh, I have to remind myself of what I'm going to remind us all today. Uh, I have to preach every message that I preach. I have to preach it to myself first because I need it too. So I want us to look this morning in the book of Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 verse 13. Go ahead and turn there. <clears throat> Scroll there, whatever your flavor is. Acts chapter 13. Acts 4, verse 13. Yeah, just see if you're paying attention. All right. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. I'm so proud of myself. I completed a 14-day 14, 14 fast yesterday in three hours. It was amazing. <clears throat> this year, it's all about speed. It's all about speed. Okay, Acts 4, verse 13. Now, as they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were marveling and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to say in reply. But when they had ordered them to go aside out, aside out of the council, they began to confer with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For the fact that a noteworthy miracle has taken place to them is apparent to all who live in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that we may not spread any further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to any man in this name." And when they had summoned them, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot stop speaking what we have seen and heard. And when they had threatened them further, they let them go, finding no basis on which they might punish them on account of the people." Because they were all glorifying God for what had happened. So what happens when we're faced with going public with our faith? Of representing what we believe to our co-workers. Or our, maybe it's your family. Or your neighbors. Your friends. Your classmates. Peter wasn't always this bold, by the way. There was a time, now he, he talked a big game, okay? Peter was, uh, he went through some seasons, man, I'm telling you. Uh, there was a time when uh, he tells Jesus, Jesus, I'll go to prison for you. Jesus, I'll take a bullet for you. I didn't say take a bullet, but he said, I'd die for you. I'd take a spear for you. He said, I would die for you. And then right after he says that, all bold and cocky, Jesus says this to him in Luke 22, verse 31. 
Simon, Simon, which was his other name. Satan is asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I've prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Now pause there for a second. When you have turned back, what's he talking about? Peter hasn't done anything. Jesus is prophesying what he is going to do. That he is going to deny him. And Peter's thinking, you know, I know I'd, I'll die for you. I, 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 will, I will go to prison. I'll do whatever. He says, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Verse 34, Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. Three times today. Now, just think about how we process that. Man, I would go to prison for you. The same day, I'll deny you three times. It's funny because I laugh inside. I've had people tell me, Pastor, I'll take a bullet for you. And then the next week, they're gone. I'm like, wait, bullets are coming. Where'd you go? We, we trick ourselves. We have this thought in our, in our head that we, we would do something, but there is a, uh, unless you have the spirit of God in you, the spirit of fear will consume you. And we can talk about how bold we are. You know, I've, I know guys who in the middle of the night, if there's a bump outside, just a bump, you'll jump up, you'll jump up, you'll run outside in your tidy whities You got nothing but just aggression, like who would dare come around my house here? You grab a fork on the way out because it's the only thing that you could find. You're like, I'm going to take whoever's in my backyard right now, I'm going to take you down, I'm going to fork you to death. And yet, the very next day, you could be in front of somebody and they say, did you say you go to church? I mean, you know, Christmas, Easter, doesn't everybody? I mean, sometimes, you know, it's short, we're in and out. Or your classmates. Hey, are you one of those Christians? You believe all that stuff? Science teachers said that we, we evolved. Come on, you need some facts. Why don't you get your facts straight? Start, stop believing in those myths. The Bible's an ancient book of literature. It means nothing today. Come on, it's not even up to date. Yeah, you know, I'm not real sure. I, I, yeah, I haven't decided yet. Peter was this guy too. He tells Jesus, I, I, I'll die for you. And then he says, uh, before the, the rooster crows, today, today. It wasn't like Peter had time to like, uh-uh. No, I'm going to show him. I'm going to prove to him. Watch how long I can do this. I can't even do it a day. And the spirit of fear consumed him. And that's the way it went down. And then after he denies him, it happens three times. John 18, verse 17. Uh, there's this, uh, it says, one of the people around the fire. They, so Jesus is now, he's been arrested. Peter's hanging around outside. And they're warming up by a fire. And one of the guys says, aren't you one of the man's, this man's disciples too? And uh, she asked Peter, he replied, I am not. What? You're, you're outside waiting for, Jesus is in there getting, getting beat and he's in there getting accused wrongly and you're out here and then all of a sudden, no, I don't know him. Don't know. A little later, uh, the same fire, same time, verse 25, it happens again. They said, hey, aren't you one of his disciples? No, no, don't know him. And then it happens again. And then the, the last time it happens, it happens by somebody who is a relative of a man named Malchus. Do you know who Malchus was? Malchus 
was one of, the, one of the guards who went to the garden where Jesus was with his disciples that night when he was arrested. And when they came to arrest him, Malchus was one of those guys. And Peter draws a sword, whacks off his ear. Now, Peter wasn't a chicken. He was like, hey, you're not going to take Jesus. Whack. I don't know if it's because he's a fisherman. He wasn't skilled at using a knife much. And he, he just looked like that's what happened. And if he's going for his throat, got his ear. I don't know how that happened. But one of Malchus's, Jesus heals the guy, by the way, and his ear comes back. And one of Malchus's relatives says hey aren't you the guy that cut off my cousin's ear well i could see that no no you know that one has some cause and effect but these are people asking some innocent questions to a guy and they really don't have a a, you know any motive to hurt him they're just saying hey and then he does it the third time and the rooster crows now we We read that Peter had the courage to do certain things, but he didn't have the power not to do certain things. And I want you to see that, and I've got just a little bit of time to show you what transformed Peter from being shy and timid into being bold and declarative. And it's the same thing that you and I have access to. There were three gifts that God gave Peter that allowed him to move from this guy to this guy. And we see them in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Peter's change from fear to faith came because of three things, three gifts. One was not the gift of fear. It was not a spirit of fear. Fear comes from the enemy. But God says, I've given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Acts chapter 4, verse 13, it says, They saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. They marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. There's a power that comes from being with Jesus. And these people recognized that, that these disciples were uneducated, were unlearned, and there's nothing wrong with being educated and unlearned, but it doesn't promise you the power. It can't give you the power of the gospel. It can't give you the power of the spirit. Just being educated and learned is a good thing, but it doesn't promise the power. These men were fearless, not because of their training, not because of their education, but because they had been with Jesus. If you want power in your life, power to overcome fear, it comes from faith. It comes from faith and believing that, yes, Jesus did rise from the dead, and the same spirit that raised him from the dead dwells in me, lives in me. Matter of fact, Peter and John waited that day in the upper room at the temple. They were waiting on the presence of God. They were waiting on Jesus' promise. If you need power in your life, wait on Jesus. Sit in his presence. Let him empower you. It's like, it's like having a, a four-wheel drive. And you, you've got a four-wheel drive You may never go off the road. And if you never go off the road, you never need to put it in four-wheel drive. Right? But living life on mission means that I'm intentionally going off-road. I'm intentionally prepared at all times to go wherever he says. And listen, you don't have to go to the mountains. You don't have to go to the mud. You don't have to go anywhere to get off-road. You can be off-road right in your workplace, right in your classroom, right in your neighborhood. You can be living off-road. It's important, though, that you've got it in four-wheel drive all the time. If you're living life on mission, God will use you when he wants to use you. Amen? Okay, 
I'm going to move fast. Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. If your neighbor's house was on fire and they were asleep, wouldn't you wake them up to tell them? Of course you would. And there are many people who are asleep in the spirit today and we, ha- we need to sound the alarm. Hey, you're, you're sleeping in the spirit. You're, you don't realize it, but your house is on fire. You don't see it right now. The devil has blinded your eyes to it, but I'm here to wake you up. Okay, power. Everybody say power. power. Say, I am power. made for mission. Okay. The second gift that God gave was love. Love. And I'm not going to read this verse, but in John 21, this is after Jesus has risen from the dead. And Jesus is with his disciples and they're eating fish by the seashore. And he says, hey, Peter, this is the first time him and Peter have had a real conversation, right? (laughs) She's like, hey, Peter. Peter's like, oh, here it comes. The last time we talked, I denied you three times. He says, hey, Peter. Yeah. He said, do you love me? Yeah. Take care of my people. Mm, Okay. Okay. Hey, Peter, do you love me? Yeah. Yep. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Hey, Peter, what? Do you love me? You know, Lord. You know my heart. He said, you're right, I do. Take care of my sheep. And what is Jesus saying to Peter in this passage? He's teaching him, as a matter of fact, yes, Lord. <laughs> this passage most importantly, identifies our motivation for caring for others. And that has to come out of a love for Jesus. You can't, you can't care for other people just because the Bible says so or because it makes you feel good about yourself. You care for other people. We minister to, minister to other people because we love Jesus. And if you don't have, if you haven't been cultivating a love for Jesus, you're going to find it hard to love other people. Cultivate. I love that word because it reminds me of a garden and you're working and you're, you're pulling the weeds and you're watering and you're feeding it and you're taking care of the plant and you're pruning it. There's a lot of work that goes into raising food. Be thankful for the farmers of this country. And so they're doing all of this work to cultivate this little plant so it produces life, right? And that's what he's saying. You need to do the same thing with your relationship with Christ. You need to cultivate it and do as much as you can and put into it to get as much as you can out of it. All right. 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. It's not a sin to feel fear. It's a sin to give fear permission. Don't give it permission. Per, the word per means thoroughly through. We're to live thoroughly on mission for Christ. And whatever we give permission to, is going to have that effect on us. We want to give permission to the Holy Spirit to love through us and to power through us. And the last one, the last gift, is a sound mind. And sound mind here is also equatable to self-control. It takes discipline in order for us to live with a sound mind, to have self-control, to live with, with a, the, the mind of the Lord in Understanding that uh, a person who has a sound mind is one who waits for the mind of Christ. And it's not just about what you want to do. It's about a self-control that you're willing to discipline yourself. Galatians 5.13 says, If you, those of you that were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, do not use your freedom as an opportunity to indulge your flesh, but through love serve one another. For the law can be summed up in a single commandment. Namely, you must love your neighbor as yourself. This verse tells us that when we use self-control, when we're operating with a sound mind and putting others' needs in front of our needs, we're fulfilling God's commandments. He says it can be summed up here in a single single one. Self-control. If you want to operate in the gifts or the fruit of the Spirit, if you want to see love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, meekness, faithfulness, long-suffering, if you want to see those active in your life, the last one, you know what he mentions is? Self-control. You can't, you can't operate in gentleness if you don't have self-control. You can't operate in peace if you don't have self-control. You can't operate in kindness unless you have self-control. 
sound mind. Power, love, the sound mind. It's the fastest sermon I've preached all week. <laughs> Listen. Okay. <clears throat> if you wake up tomorrow and you go through your day and you've, uh, you've loved God a little more than you did today and you love people a little more than you did today, tomorrow will be a win. But if you wake up tomorrow and, uh, you know, the Dow doubles and your investment triples and uh, you pass the big test, you win the big game, uh, you get the big uh, whatever it may be and all the cars, all the lights turn green for you. Everything happens in your favor. If that's your day tomorrow, it may be a good day, but it won't be the God day if you didn't learn to love God more and love people more. Power, love, and a sound mind. Father, we pray that you would give us a spirit power, spirit of love and a sound mind. And we draw near, Lord, to cultivate that relationship with you. Help us, Father, to live our lives on mission. And show us, Lord, what does that look like this week? How do we live life on mission? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Take a look at this video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board flight 1010 with service from Cape Coral, Florida to our local and foreign mission partners. We ask that you please fasten your seatbelts at this time and secure all baggage underneath your seat. On behalf of the crew, I ask that you please direct your attention to the monitors above as we review participation procedures. There are 11 different destinations available for you and your whole family to visit on your journey around campus. Upon your exit from the main auditorium, we ask that you take the passport handed out to you as you enter today, which includes all of these areas listed out. If you didn't receive a passport when you entered, more will be available in the back of the room as you exit or at the info center. We hope you take a moment and visit each of these incredible ministries located in either the lobby or under the portico and receive a passport sticker at each of your stops. Each destination may also have sights, flavors, and experiences for you to enjoy. So stop by and grab some information on each of these amazing missions partners. If you complete your passport, then visit the prize table under the portico for a chance to win a gift card to our cafe. If you're traveling with children, you can find designated activities available on the back of the passport for them so they can participate in the journey too. And before you exit the main auditorium today, please check around your seat for any personal belongings that you may have brought on board with you. On behalf of Christian Life Fellowship Airlines and the entire crew, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Thank you for joining us as we engage the world and leading our city and world to life. And now a word from our captain, David, David Comer. Comer. So what's going to happen? You're going to leave here. You got your passport. Uh, we've got all of the missions represented around the lobby, on the outside of the building, all through the building. And you can go by and just visit each one. They're there to just let you know what they're doing and, and how your giving is making a difference. And so take your time, walk through, get your kids, walk through, get your kids, walk through. And... Uh, and then see all the difference that you're making around the world. Amen. Let's stand up together. And on the count of three, we're going to leave and we're going to go do it. Ready? One, two, three. Lead someone to life. Amen. God bless you.